I looked at who all was here and some of the experts and people that have kind of come up over the years. And one of the things that I think, and I didn't ask, but one of the things that I think that we can collectively have in common is that we have a rite of passage of screwing up. We have a rite of passage of absolutely doing everything meticulously, trying to find every detail of everything. We have measured, we have worried, we had obsessed. There is not one area of this we kind of didn't know or mess up on. And then we learned. And most of us kind of said, all right, so screw it. <laughs> like we're, we're going to be who we are and we're gonna use this information and we're gonna try to become our ultimate authentic selves. And that's kind of the goal, really, is, is to be primed. So with this information, I want you to understand that none of this is about trying to achieve a certain body. It's not about trying to achieve a certain kind of athletic goal or a nutritional goal or anything like that. It's not to become obsessive. It's not to use this to try to dial in, oh, if I eat a cold potato or if I take a hot <laughs> bath. <laughs> Or if I, you know, I do something in a fasted state, or if I do something with uh, uh, injuries, and, and you'll see, I can get this super metabolic rate going, and I can ultimately beat this. No, it's not going to help. That's the spoiler. It's not going to help. Knowing these things as a fact, even if you could know them as a fact, it's not going to change anything. So the goal of this is to try to help you guys find some sort of application, either for you or your clients, to where you have control, and you can apply this in some way into your life to actually make a difference. That's the goal of this, or at least in some son of a nutshell. So we will talk about caloric burn in a little bit more of a detail. What are the factors of caloric burn? We have basal metabolic rate, which is ultimately your at rest, and I'm going to go into detail about these things. You have your NEPA and your NEAT, you have your thermic effect of food, you have your thermic effect of activity, and then you have specialty items too, like injury uh, repair and recovery needs, um, for instance, it's a pregnancy or if you uh, had burns or things like that. So we're, all of this ultimately goes into your total daily energy expenditure. That's the point. Every day you burn a certain amount of calories, and every day you eat a certain amount of calories is an in-out factor. Um, there is no true measure of caloric burn, and even the gold standard only works in a trapped environment. And that's ultimately what we find. You can use your Fitbits, you can use any sort of your caloric burned measurement devices and things like that. But ultimately, all flawed, all have issues. None of them are gonna be accurate. None of them are going to tell you exactly what's going on. None of them are going to be perfect. Um, there's different things that are good too and to use in different manners and for different populations. Uh, metabolic chambers or CART uh, formulas. They all have their place, don't get me wrong. Because at, at a point it's like, okay, why am I doing this? Like we have all this advice, we have all these means. Do I just do portions? Do I just do this? And everybody likes to have a different method of how they do stuff. So my goal with this is to, yes, explain to you that there's like some flawed things, but we can all pick something out from these things to use and we all kind of can have our formula to doing so. Um, but with uh, metabolic carts or Fitbits or formulas, they're all gonna have different results and ultimately the research that's on it, it's still kind of new, uh, especially for a lot of these activities and they're old <laughs> with a lot of formulas and things like that. So don't worry so much about the numbers, but we are going to talk about what you can do with those numbers and how you can find a way to apply it. So for your basal metabolic rate, this determines every function with your body at rest. And this is from hair growth to uh, recovering from being sick or anything like that. This is what I call bed rest or coma. <laughs> like if you're just, you're just laying there, but it's going to be different <laughs> every day depending upon your health, your metabolic health, uh, what you've eaten the day before or what you haven't eaten the day before will in some ways also determine your basal metabolic rate. Because even though we talk about TEF and we talk about the thermic effect of food, when they're making these formulas and they're making these considerations, they also did keep in mind a certain level of digestive function and, and a certain level of uh, alterations in heart rate, body temperature, and these kinds of things. Thyroid dysfunctions or anything like that, it's all going to affect it. A lot of people worry about their basal metabolic rate. They obsess over it and they do metabolic CART tests or they do things to try to see what it is or how high they can get it. If it's too low, if it's not, I have, I have cold hands, I have a low body temperature, I can never get warm, I, uh, all, all these kinds of things, my thyroid. Well, when we look at things like you know, thyroid function or we look at things that have to do with metabolic rate, we see that while it affects it, it doesn't affect it with such a margin or a degree in which that you should really be worrying about it. It's more about feeling good. So don't worry about your thyroid because you wanna have a higher metabolic rate. 
Worry about your thyroid because you want to feel better. You know, don't worry about what you're eating or your digestive system or some sort of food intake because you worry about your basal metabolic rate. Don't worry about that. Worry about it because you want to feel good. Because ultimately, trying to hit some sort of number or understand some sort of number, that's not the point. That's not the goal. You shouldn't make that be the goal. 